Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. The Solar Warlock class has become the most popular and highly used class this season for a sheer number of reasons. From being able to apply Radiant and Scorch throughout our seasonal mods, having the best survival and damage kit available for newer players, to being able to enhance our solar weapons with key exotics, such as Phoenix Protocol, Sunbraces, Dawn Chorus, etc. We have covered many solar builds since our time here, but today I want to showcase a pretty strong Cenotap solar build that will easily get you into the high waves in Onslaught mode and more, all from supporting your team. It will provide easy access to special and heavy ammo, a fast ability regen for both grenades and melee, a decent damage profile with our Trace Rifle of choice, and room for improvements if the following does not suit you. Let's make a start. So, the concept of the build is to allow players to continuously create ammo for ourselves and teammates, locking down enemies in one large group via our Trace Rifle, and support our team through any way is necessary. For this, using the Cenotap Mask Exotic is where the build will start first. Its exotic trait, High Priority, states, It steadily reloads a portion of your equipped Trace Rifle magazine from reserves. Damaging a vehicle, boss or champion with a Trace Rifle marks them as a target. When an ally defeats the marked target, special ammo is generated for you, and heavy ammo is for your teammates. This exotic allows us to not only use Trace Rifles more effectively with their low damage, but will actively reward you ammo depending on any types you mark and kill. This allows any Trace Rifle of your choosing to become a support weapon just like that. Now you have plenty of room to decide on what is best for a Trace Rifle, and if you have Divinity, then you can go all out supportive with the two combined. Of course, I like to synergize my kit with the correct elemental used, so having Prometheus Lens will be the best option. Fires a solar trace beam that creates a field of heat energy that grows as the weapon is fired. Sustained damage applies scores to targets. This is then combined with the park flame refraction, which states, It kills with the weapon return a fraction of the ammo used to the magazine from reserves, extending the beam's duration. So when the two exotics are combined, you are producing ammo for your team. You are applying a large death ray of scorch onto enemies. You'll also get an ammo back per kill made and duration. And lastly, this is feeding right back into your abilities and vice versa. A pretty great to start with and quite a powerful combo. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. Touch of flames, where fusion grenades detonate twice. Heat rises, where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air. While airborne and have heat rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. Ember of Searing, where defeating Scorch targets grants melee energy and creates fire sprite. Ember of Torches, where powered melee attacks against targets makes you an allies radiant. And Ember of Imperium, where Solar Weapon or BD Thunder blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects. Breaking this down, the most easiest way to keep the build afloat while making it lethal is to rely on Ember of Imperium and Ember of Torches effect to keep ourselves buffed with Radiant, while also using this to quickly take out larger enemies fast just for the ammo. Outside of the Surge mod we have, having Radiant will allow us to deal with enemies faster with thanks to our weapon's duration and ability to deal wide scale damage the longer we fire it. As our weapon can apply Scorch over time, having Ember of Ashes and Steering is the next best play for players to go for. Ashes mean we can apply Ignitions faster when compared to not having it on hand, while Searing will allow us to use our melee more often, which pairs well with Prometheus Lens and Ember of Torches. With this in mind, you should be able to use the following mods I have, and not worry so much about the lack of melee or grenade ability on hand. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority. Strength is also marked as high priority, but in our case, it will get most of its support via our fragments. Resilience will have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. Ideally recommended if you're attempting to use this build in any high level content. The following damage reduction should be strong enough to survive certain one shot hits in game. A discipline we have ours at tier 10 for a 37 second cooldown via fusion grenades. The following grenade is suitable for build like this as it allows us to easily combine this effect with our weapon and midi all at once while also getting a huge damage boost. Outside of Ember of Searing, Fire Sprite Effect, have an impact induction times 2 for a 17% boost and distribution for a 4% boost is enough to keep this ability going from start to finish. 
you quite honestly don't need anything else to support it with thanks to how the build works. The strength we have ours at tier 4 for a 1 minute 15 second cooldown via incinerate snap. As mentioned, we have our fragments and aspects available that will support the build, so where it's at is currently fine. However, adding momentum transfer and outreach is also fine for more support. Additional mods which are highly recommended, we have the following. Charged up times 1 is going to give you that extra plus 1 of armor charge once active. Next, having the harmonic cipher mod for producing orbs of power via solo weapon kills will help big time. Adding both special and heavy ammo finder mods are highly recommended for a build like this, along with reserves and scavenger mods. Lastly, having two solo surge mods for a 17% solo boost is highly recommended for the later rounds. So as we have covered our main primary trace rifle of choice, I'm just going to cover the two remaining weapons I have went with. Having the buzzard with kinetic tremors is a highly recommended weapon for backing our trace rifle up in case we do run out of ammo. With thanks to it being a kinetic primary, it will have infinite ammo on hand which will be useful when against small to medium enemies and bosses at time. Add on kinetic tremors built up damage effect and this alone will carry you to end game quite easily. Heavy will depend on the situation you are in. Having Apex Predator with Vorpal and Reconstruction will be useful for boss encounters and dealing with mini bosses as well. At the same time, having a machine gun such as Unwavering Duty with Incandescent is suitable for the ad claim side of things and suitable for dealing with wave section much more efficiently. Do remember, you can swap your heavy out before starting the boss encounters. From testing this in Legend Onslaught mode all the way to about Wave 42, the build did exceptionally well until certain points. Now the damage you get from the weapon is strong enough to solo take on a large group of enemies all at once while your teammates focus on the ADU or side objectives. As Prometheus effect will expand our solo attack the longer it is fired, and since Senna Tap will steadily reload our weapon as well, this overall means we have created a death beam that truly fits the name of such an innocent and supportive build. It goes crazy when against enemies that bunch up, as Scorched Damage Inflicted will set off a number of ignitions one after another, while also rewarding us ammo and heavy ammo for our team. Now, if I had a good team that used more heavier weapons like rocket launchers, grenade launchers with big ammo reserves, and machine guns with large reserves, we could have flown all the way to wave 50 without a sweat. On top of that, us being able to use our Well of Radiance and Rage Effect more often, we would have promoted them to use their attacks more aggressively rather than hold back and only use it for when the time is required. The build does everything you would expect a supportive build should do, but can also do well enough to make a noticeable impact if too much enemies spawn. However, there are some things you need to know about the build before using it. Firstly, although we have enough ammo mods available to keep our trace rifle going, you will and can run out of ammo if you don't monitor your shots. This can be led down to two reasonings, enemies being too strong to take down fast and ammo just not dropping. As you enter the higher rounds, enemies will become stronger over time and this is where the trace rifle starts to fall off if you are not prepared. Prometheus is lucky as it can apply Scorch for that extra bit of damage and also get increased damage via our abilities and surge mods. If by chance you don't have the following though, it does become a bit more trickier to net kills with more trace rifles in hand. Hence why having a good primary and heavy will be important for the build. Secondly, ammo drops can be weird at times, as sometimes you'll be able to net a large amount of ammo back from a few enemies, while at the same time, you can go through a whole wave and not get any ammo to drop. A center tap can help with this issue on hand, but only if we trigger its effect properly, which is something that requires us to have ammo in the first place. I have done everything I can to support the build how it is, so at this point it's more just down to luck as to how far you can get with it. Although the only thing that does hold the build back is a lack of ammo at times, being able to pay attention to your kit is more than enough to keep this really great support build going. Overall, if you want a nice and simple build for support, but also want to farm the given mode effectively, then the following setup is generally the best thing to use right now. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub out here. I will leave a dim name for the build below. If you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. 
It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.